Hey everyone, this is the start of a new video series. This time I'm going to be playing as a VIP zero player, meaning zero money spending. And I'm going to try to get to around 1 billion SAV in about one and a half years. Originally I was thinking one year, but then I chickened out because I don't really want to spend too much time being super active and it might take longer than a year, especially uh, spending absolutely zero dollars and not playing on it as much as I might play on my main account. So we're going to go for one and a half years to go from day one, playing on a pretty new server, brand new account. This is my first day logging in, and we're going to try to get up to one billion SAV in about one and a half years. In this video, I'm also going to cover my uh, Game of Cans spreadsheet calculator, and I'll show you guys how to use it too. If you want to use it yourselves, I'll include a link in the video description. Um, ever since the new Game of Cans update where they added the dog rescue game, I haven't been able to use my laptop to make videos anymore. And I don't have the camera on this PC, so you're going to have to do without my talking head. You'll just have to listen to my voice and see what's on my screen. So here I am in the new server. I haven't even unlocked everything yet. You can see the feast is still locked. This is my very first day of playing. And I just want to explain that there's like phases to the game when you're starting a new account. During the starting phase, you're kind of just trying to get, you know, your villages up and running so you can have some decent income. You need to get a decent income in order to have the silver to upgrade your advisors. Um, you're not going to get much sob if all your advisors are completely unleveled. And then at some point you kind of transition into, you've got, you know, enough silver to kind of get you going and you start saving up for rushes and stuff like that. Um, so this in this first video, I'm not going to go too deep into things. I'm just going to kind of give a basic overview of the starting plan, and I'll show how to use my uh, spreadsheet calculator. And I'll kind of talk about a little bit of new content that's coming to the game. This might not be a super long video. I'm kind of making it later at night at request of somebody, so uh, it is what it is. It might not be as well edited as some of my other videos. Um, so on my main account, I try to keep on top of like you know all of my resource gathering and and you know use up all my hay and stuff like that. But on this account, I'm not planning on putting that much time into it. Um, so not only is it gonna be VIP zero, but I'm only gonna be logging on this account like maybe two or three times per day is my goal. Um, probably once in the morning, once around lunch break, and once before I go to bed. I'll just kind of do the little chores that I have to do. So this could be a VIP zero account with just moderate activity level, nothing crazy, and I'm going to try to get it to one billion in one and a half years. Now, there's a couple of things that are going to be absolutely imperative if this plan is actually going to work, and one of those things is I have to get into a legion um, because you get a lot of free loot from a legion, and as VIP zero, you need all the free loot you can get. So I can pretty much tell you already, if I don't manage to make it into a legion here, this is going to entirely fail. Um, but I think I should be able to worm my way into a legion. That shouldn't be a big deal. Another thing is I'm probably going to want to, at some point, get my way into whatever the top horde on the server ends up being. Because the top horde on the server will get an extra amount of free loot from all the mini games, And so that's going to be a must. As a VIP zero, I'm going to have to maximize as many pieces of free loot as possible, and I'm going to want to put in as little effort as possible to get it. So those are some things on my check mark. I got I, I check mark list. I got to get into a legion and start harvesting free loot there. I got to get into a strong horde. Um, another thing that I want to mention: if you're trying to duplicate the performance that I put on in this in this video series yourself, you're going to have to be careful about what server you choose to set up in. Um, so this server that I'm in right now, um, I think this server is a couple weeks old now. I just joined it today. I don't know exactly how old it is. And the reason why I chose to join this server is I happen to know one or two of the people who are in here. And my sense of it was that this server is not going to be a super high spending server. And I wouldn't be all that surprised if a fair number of the people who are playing here ended up quitting after like six to eight months of playing the game. And the reason why that's important is if you want to grow really well as a VIP zero player, you're better off joining a server that's going to end up having very few high spenders on it and a server that is going to end up being fairly inactive overall, really, because um, as a VIP zero, you're not going to do very well competing in the cross server rushes. And that means that your main source of loot is going to be from the in server rushes. And that also means that the weaker your competition in your server is, the better off you'll be. 
So my general sense of things is that this should be a decent server for me to set up a home in. It shouldn't be too competitive. I mean, obviously at the start, everyone's gonna trounce me because I'm getting to the server a couple weeks late and I'm gonna be VIP zero. But it doesn't really matter too much what happens at the start, uh, especially not when our time frame is one and a half years. You gotta make a long-term plan, think about the big picture and have consistency. And that's what our plan is gonna be. So um, aside from you know getting lots of free loot and having a long-term plan and consistency, another thing that's really important um, as a VIP zero player is to set manageable goals, you know, goals that aren't too difficult and goals that are also very efficient. So what I mean by that is basically your advisor build order and how you're planning on getting there with your advisor build order. Um, and I guess that'll be a good time for me to segue into talking about some new content first, and then I'll go back to talking about my build order. So I'm going to switch over to this tab right here. And this is a little short little content guide that I put together myself at somebody's request. Um, it's what I believe to be accurate as of this video, um, this video being made in early April of 2023, but none of this is confirmed from the developers. And in a few months from this video, it'll probably all be outdated and or slightly incorrect. But anyway, here we go. There's a new pet oriented game coming and I state that it's pet oriented because we see this icon here which is called Wild Nature Obtained Through Land of the Lost Limited Time Ranking, which means there's a new mini game called Land of the Lost. It has an eagle on it and a wind blowing, which means it's probably gonna be a new pet game. The reason why I say it's gonna be a new pet game is because first we had the pet game where you throw knives at the spinning log and that game got deleted. And then we had the mountain adventure where your pets go adventuring on the snowy mountain and that got deleted. And right now the placeholder for a pet mini game is just har Harem Idol. And uh, I don't think Harem Idol is one of the most popular mini games, so I wouldn't be surprised to see it phased out. And the developers have mentioned they're looking at expanding uh, pet content to make pets more interesting. So from all that, I can surmise they're working on a new pet mini game that's going to be similar to Lowland or Can Quest, except it's going to use your pets for the combat instead of advisors. And um, it's going to be like wild themed, and it's going to be called Land of the Lost, and it's going to have pets in it. And there's going to be an advisor you can unlock through Land of the Lost, who's going to be Vilma, who's a red advisor. That's a consort for herself, like a war maiden, and is also a red with a presence. We've got grants 12% per level, the same as Ken and Marco. And here she is. This is what she looks like in all her glory. Um, she's got the most overall theoretical potential out of any advisor in the game currently, because she has both consort and presence but she's not a low level orange advisor like a war maiden is. So essentially she's like, if you remember the hype around the war maidens cause they had both uh, consort and presence. Uh, well, that's Vilma, except she's a red advisor instead of an orange. So it's, it's power creep to the next level. She's gonna be the strongest there is until the next strongest thing comes out. I think her decisive kill ability is for champion battle, which is a new mode that they're also adding, which I think is going to be like arena, but more oriented around Legion. Not entirely sure. Legion um, Champion Battle is not released yet, so this is just me guessing. Uh, Legion War is also not released as of this yet, so um, her decisive kill ability might also be for Legion War. Again, this information will probably be released in a month or two, but for right now, I'm just guessing. Um, the ad other advisors in her collection will be unlocked most likely through either Champion Battle, Legion War, or Land of the Lost. And at least one of them is probably going to be another red advisor. Um, how do I know all that? It's just educated guessing. It could not be true, but that's my take right now. Her presence is going to be just for her, like how Ken and Marco's presence is just for them. It's not going to be like a Queen or War Maiden presence. Um, you can see here, this is what it looks like. And here's just a little note about what's going on in the game. There was the first round of content when the game first came out that had the Wolves of War, who were relatively cheap and easy to build. And uh, Tamo with first Red Advisor was in that early round of content too. All of these were for a while some of the less impressive champions in the game. The second round of content in the game added the Steppy Queens, who were a bit harder, more expensive to build, but stronger as well. And Marco and Ken were also stronger than Tamo, but also harder to obtain. And then we got a third round of content, which is ongoing right now and hasn't been fully completed. 
They've got the War Maidens, two of them are released right now. They're even harder and more expensive to build than the Queens, but stronger and fully maxed. And basically what I'm getting at is here is as we go through each round of content, they're adding stuff that's even stronger, but even harder to unlock. And then they make the old stuff easier to unlock or add more ways to upgrade it by spending money like outfits. And too long, don't read. You're going to be able to get more and more strength for free as the game goes on because more and more of the content is going to become accessible. But if you ever want to be one of the strongest with all the newest shiny stuff, you're going to have to pay more and more and more. And as I was thinking about that, I thought, gosh, you know, it seems like the smartest way to play is just to take your time and not spend any money. And that's why I decided to start this VIP Zero series. It's because on my main account, I have already spent a fair amount of money, and so I'm no longer in the spend nothing frame of mind. But this series, I will be in the spend nothing frame of mind. Uh, and that does it for the new content coming out. Okay, so here we are looking at what I plan to be my final team for this VIP Zero account when it hits 1 billion SOV. And the final team is mainly going to consist of three advisors because as a VIP Zero player, I believe it's most efficient to stick with one horde battle squad and then maybe build a little bit of a fourth advisor to help out your arena team. So you can see the top three are going to be for the battle team and the bottom one is going to be for the arena team. Um, the reason why those first two at the top say level 425 plus is because we're going to try to get enough general seals, which are a legion resource, and we're going to try to get those from winning talent rushes so that we can push both of our top two advisors past level 400. Um, and that's where a lot of our solve is going to come from, and it's going to be reliant on getting into a legion. So we'll have to see how well that goes as this progresses. Uh, then our third is going to be Hanjo. Um, on the early game, the only consort we're really going to be building is Hanna, and Hanjo is pretty easy to star up as well. And if you build Hanna for like a year or so and pair her with Hanjo, it gets to be pretty cost effective in terms of what VIP Zero players have access to. So Hanjo is just like a little cost effective choice to tag in there as a third. And uh, Untold Legend, this means it's an unknown advisor, but. For my last fourth, it's probably going to be somebody in Vel Vel Vilma's group because I want to finish uh, her, col her collection if I can. Um, the reason why I've chosen to do it this way, um, early on in the progress of this account, I'm just going to be pooling up my resources and I'm not going to be very active in battles. Um, the reason for that is because I'll just be waiting for the activity in the server to die out a little while I pull up my resources and then I'll start trying to win rushes and mini games when the activity level of the server has dropped off a bit. That way I'll be spending my resources when I can get the most reward for them rather than competing when the competition is strong. And since my plan is not to be very active in battles on this account, at least not for the early stages of the account, it doesn't really make very much sense to try to go for sub instead of Kuba. I mean, Kuba is going to be um, forced upon me anyway. Um, sorry, that's the wrong place. Yeah, Kuba's could be forced upon me because I have a chance to pull him when I'm just grabbing stuff in the Proving Ground. And so if Kuba's could be forced upon me, then it will be easiest if I stick with just Kuba so I can 5-star him pretty easily. If I try to add sub into the mix as well, then I'll have two advisors that are orange and it'll be much harder to 5-star one of them as a VIP zero. So what we're going to do is we're just going to focus on 5-starring Kuba before we unlock any other orange advisors. Although that plan might get ruined a little because we might get Oracle that naughty dog thrust upon us who we don't want at all but it is what it is we'll just have to deal with it um hanjo i already talked about um the last one we're going to go for is vilma um the reason why is because vilma is being released so late compared to the other red advisors um in order to make her worth building when she's released so late in the game cycle they're also going to make her overpowered and since I'm not going to be ready to build a red advisor until like I'm at least probably four or five months into this account, by the time I'm ready to start thinking about unlocking a red advisor, um, Vilma should be available and she'll be the most OP red advisor and you're certainly not building any more than one red advisor as a VIP zero if you know what's good for you. So I think it'll be worthwhile to just uh, cost effectively build Hanjo and Kuba and then I'll save all the rest of my flags for Vilma. And that'll be my plan in terms of build order. Um, 
that's really all I have to say about my plan uh, on this account. Um, for the early stages, I guess I'll let you know what I'm planning on doing to get it up, up and off the ground and running. I'll three star both Demir and Bayar, however you pronounce his name, and I'll get them both to like level hundred, maybe level two hundred. Both of them. Um, the reason why I'm three starring them and getting them to level two hundred is because that'll just push their stats up and make them able to get more out of villages. And I have to push their stars up anyway in order to finish Kuba's collection later, so they are just a decent choice to build. Um, building them will get me more soldiers and help me expand my territory to get my resource collection going a bit faster. Um, probably after that early phase where I build the two of them just to get me off the ground, I will start working towards both Hanjo and Kuba concurrently and just funneling my flags into those two. So I'm going to start out with these two guys just to get me off the ground for like the first probably three or f three or four weeks be building them probably just three weeks I don't think I'll keep building them past three weeks that'd probably be a waste and after that I'll start building up Hanjo and gradually start focusing more and more on Kuba as time goes by uh, and then after Kuba's getting close to being fully built I'll start focusing more and more resources into trying to unlock Velma and that'll be my three-man team and if they get fully built the way I'm planning on building them that'll be enough to give me one billion sov. So that's the game plan I think I've explained it fairly well now I'm going to um, explain how to use the spreadsheet a little for anyone who's interested in using it. Um, so let me just go back in the spreadsheet here the main menu so here's the main menu. It looks a little overwhelming, but um, that's probably just because I organized it badly. It just has a bunch of different links. So this, these links here, these are just the quick links to the advisor tabs where you can enter advisor data if you want to play around with your advisors. This is the link to where you can calculate flags. Um, so basically you enter the number of green flags, blue flags, purple flags, orange flags, red flags you have. You select the advisor that you're trying to star up. You select how many stars they have. You select how many stars you're trying to get them to. And then it will give you advice on how many flags of that color you need to star them up. So for example, if I just add in some stuff here. Whoops. Say it's going to be a purple. And it's at one star and I want to get it to two stars. It tells me you need a total of 50 purple flags to do that. I could currently make 26 purple flags. So I'm going to need 24 more purple flags. So that is the way the flag calculator portion of this works. I'm going back to the main menu. Here's the talent calculator. This is just for talent rush. Um, you can select how you're planning on using your medallions here. Generally, you want to use them on red talents because that's more efficient than using them on orange talents. And then you can record how many of each of these items you're going to be using in the tabs here. And then um, if you have extra talent XP that you want to add into the calculation too, like from your barracks, for example, you can enter how much talent XP it is. And then it, this is the total amount of talent you could gain. So this is useful if you're planning on waiting, like I will be on my VIP zero account until the last day of talent rush to see if you can win it or not. Um, I'm not really interested in competing in talent rush unless I can win it because I just want that um, reward that comes from winning the cross server talent rush, which is um, these bad boys right here, the general seals, increase warrior pillar slots. I want to have two warrior pillar slots on this account. Um, I think that should be plenty. Um, so I need to win at least one cross server talent rush and I want to win it sooner rather than later because it'll really help my growth if I have two warrior pillar slots open. Again, all of this is irrelevant if I don't make it into Legion, but I'm pretty sure I'll be able to make it into a Legion. And then, so that's what the talent calculator is for. It's just for helping you figure out how well you can do in Talent Rush. 
Going back to the main menu now, here's the pet calculator. Um, this pet calculator is kind of useful on my main account because my pets are really souped up on my main account. This is actually a screenshot of one of my pet pets from my main account. Um, and this is an example showing you where you get the information from in your, uh, in your Game of Cans app to enter into this spreadsheet. So here's the example image. Here's the text that explains how to use it. And then you can choose whether or not you want these to be added to the total amount of solve you can gain. And if you're pressing yes, which I don't want it on yes, I'll just leave it at no. If you have it at yes, then the amount of solve from the pet tab will be added to this total here. So if you're planning on unequipping and re-equipping pets, then you can figure out how much solve you can pool up from that. That's kind of an advanced tactic that I've covered in other videos, and it's not going to be very useful for my VIP Zero account because my VIP Zero account is not going to have pets that are worth anything. And it's really only a relevant tactic if you're trying to min-max really hard like I am in my main account. So the pet calculator can help you for that if that's something you're trying to do, but it's honestly a very niche tool. I made it mostly for myself and for anyone else who cared to try to use it, but you don't really have to worry about the pet calculator too much. It's it's just a thing if you want to get really deep into the weeds of being super efficient, but it's, it's not low hanging fruit. So you don't have to worry about it much. If it's confusing for you, don't worry about this. You can just ignore it. Um, but if you want to play around with it, then I suggest you read these instructions here that I've written to help you understand how it works. All right, going back to the main menu. Here is the charm or intimacy calculator link. I'll click that one. You can also go to them through the tabs down here. So here it is. This is the charm column and this is the intimacy column. Um, if you have amounts of charm or intimacy that you're gonna earn from outfits, you can enter them in these rows. Enter the number of consorts you have here in this area right here. I have 28 in my main, that's why I'd set it 28. And then each of these rows are for the different items you can add that give charm or intimacy. Um, here you can add on some extra for how much you think you'll gain from milestones. Just a drop down menu. And then it adds up the above and that's the total you can get. So this is useful if you're trying to win Marco Polo Rush. Again, that's more of a higher VIP concern. I don't really plan to use this much for my VIP Zero account because I'm not gonna be going for Marco but I use this every time I'm trying to win one of these rushes on my main account. So if that's useful for you, go ahead and make use of it. Um, I do advise, if you can, making a copy of this spreadsheet when you start working on it. That way nobody else is gonna overwrite your data. If you just use the public version, other people might screw around with it while you're trying to use it. So going back to the main menu. Um, Look here for historical data. Yeah, I'll show you the historical data. So this is mainly being used for my main account. It's got the, some rush data on to help me remember how things went in the past. It's got a reminder of the order that the rushes come in. Here's a little resource calculator where I can enter your, in your incomes and how much income items you have and your seasons of prosperity and it lets you know how much that you can get. This is if you're thinking about if you wanna push higher in silver, meat, or soldier rush, this will, one will help you out. Um, this is just uh, my little planning section where I was thinking about who I want to build. There's some other hidden tabs here too that have notes for myself that aren't relevant to this video, so I'm just not going to worry about that. Click here for item values. I can show you this. So here's my item calculator. Um, how this works is uh, every item here I've assigned value based on how valuable I personally think it is. The game is very inconsistent when it comes to valuing things. It'll make them cost different amounts depending on what store you buy them in. Um, and the diamond value that I came up with is what I would call the fair price. Uh, for most of these things, the game is going to charge you much more diamonds than what I consider the quote unquote fair price. Um, the only things on this list that the game's actually going to charge you less diamonds for than what I have as the fair price are the mini game stamina, and they will undercharge you for those if you're buying them through um, the main mini game screen where you just click and you're out of stamina and it gives you the option to get more. It'll give you these for cheaper, up to usually five or ten 
per day you can get for the cheaper price. Um, the main use for this is when I'm trying to figure out if it's worthwhile to use more resources to push higher in a rush, I will add you know, whatever resources I think I have to use in order to push higher here, add whatever quantities they are. And then I will add the extra rewards that I'll get from winning the rush here. And then I just compare the values to see whether it's worth it or not. So that's how I use this. I just use it to figure out, hey, do I want to do this or not? And it's also if I only have enough diamonds to afford one thing or the other, I'll measure them both against each other here and see which one's worth more. And this is basically just to help me be more objective when I'm trying to value things because I'm often inconsistent. I did my best to come up with what I think is a fairly accurate value for things here relative to each other. Um, it's probably not like super accurate because there's different variables that affect how much something's worth, like how well you can do in a rush and stuff like that. But it's much better than a wild guess. It's a very educated guess, I would say very educated because I've been playing this game for like two years now and I have a fair amount of experience. So if you're new to the game, um, this is probably going to give you a much better idea of what things are worth than just trying to figure it out on your own. So feel free to use the item data calculator if it's helpful to you. It may or may not be. And now I'm going to explain how you use this when you're trying to win Sov Rush. So here you can enter how much Sov you earn when you use candy to raise heirs. And that will calculate how much sov you can gain from your candy. Here's the average sov per jade ring, it's which is the average attributes of the typical heir that you're going to marry. You can enter that, and it will tell you how much it'll calculate how much you can get from your um, jade rings. And you can enter the number of uh, equipment scrolls that you're planning on using underneath here. That's what this whole row is for: is entering. So you first you enter saw for candy, saw for jade rings, then you enter the amount of candy, jade rings, and equipment scrolls of each type you're planning on using here. And that will give you the saw from that. If you go to the pet calculator and switch any of the pets there to on after entering the data, it'll add the, the amount you can gain from your pets also to the total. But the main amount of saw that you can gain is going to come from your advisors. And so you can add up to 10 advisors. Um, go to advisor one here. So basically you just start out by selecting what type of advisor it is. I only allow you to calculate red, orange, and purple because you shouldn't be building any advisors besides that anyway for the purposes of Sov Rush. Um, you select how many stars they have now, how many stars you're thinking they're going to have at the end of the rush, if they have any presence or not. The only um, purple who has a presence is Attila. Um, he has no group, so it's not applicable. If he was a wolf or a queen or a war maiden, you could select how many are unlocked, and it would give them the accordingly group group bonus. Um, current level of the presence, what level the presence is going to get upgraded to. Um, advisor's current talent, just enter however much talent they have right now. If you want to see how much you would gain from building them from scratch, you can just leave it at zero. That way their starting point will be zero. Enter how much talent you're going to add to them. Enter the level they're currently at. Enter the level they're going to be at after you finish leveling them up. If they've got a consort, you can enter what the skill four is right now and what the skill four is going to be at the end of the rush. And then you can choose whether you want to add this advisor to the total on the main page or if you're just testing. So right now this is just a test and what this is showing basically is how much um, Sov you could get from raising Attila from that star level to this star level, increasing the presence that much and adding this much talent. And that's the amount of Sov that you would gain. And if you wanted to put that into the calculator, then just say yes. And then we're going to go back to the main page. And now you see, can see it's been added there. So if you want to, and this is showing you the amount you're getting here. So you can easily tell how much each of your advisors is adding. Yes. Go back to the main page. If you decide, hmm, I'm only going to build this one and not that one, then you can go back to here real quick and just turn it off. No. And then go back to the main page. And now it's not there anymore. So this is a way to allow you to try out a whole bunch of different scenarios to see which one would be best. 
You can enter data into each of these 10 different tabs for different advisors that you could build and then turn them on or off, you know, and, and see how much solve you're getting. So this is a way to experiment and see, you know, what would be the most effective way of gaining solve and how much total you can gain. And it's just good overall for educating yourself and also for seeing if you can win the solve rush or not. Uh, it's starting to get late and I think I covered everything I wanted to for this video. So you can find the link to the spreadsheet in the video description and I'm going to call it a night. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and post in the comments and let me know.